against the very talented Bob McDonald. WBOS Brookline. The line of high school hockey history. 210 points during the regular season, a record. And it will be the defense of Cathedral versus the offense of the Winter Vikings, a team during the Eastern Mass Tournament that was led through many pulsating victories, and it should be a real interesting contest. Fred Tate all set to take the draw here. As center rights with Dave Gar here with the play-by-play, -play, Lance LaFaro. Thank you, and good evening, everyone. This is our final broadcast of the 1975-76 season, and they have a crowd somewhere around 10,000, maybe more, to witness this Division I final. <laughs> Cathedral are defending the goal to our left, and they shoot it down into Winthrop territory. McGee dropped one against the boards. The puck was shot to the center ice area. Danny Brugman takes that shot, and Santanello picks up his first save of the contest. Cathedral, 17, two and two. Uh, Mastriani in goal, excuse me. Now then, Cathedral shoot it down in on Diaz who leaves it there for Goddard, who will receive an award on Wednesday night as the outstanding... Well, there's the puck in front of the net! They score! Cathedral! After 50 seconds, Morgenstern, and this is just like that Division II game. And Lance, exactly, 48 seconds out in the Western Mass against Bill Ricka, P.J. Murphy, Steve scored a goal, and now at the 50-second mark, it's 1-0 for Cathedral. Jack Morgenstern, big, sturdy left winger, 6'1", 160, at 16 points of the season. And uh, Diaz did not hold that rebound very well. He did not. He lost it right out in front of the net, and Cathedral came up with a quick goal. Best thing in the world that could happen for Cathedral that where they are the underdogs. Now then, uh, Burke is sent out there at left, right wing. McDonald brothers are at center and left wing respectively. Goddard is being harassed there by the Cathedral player Fenton. Now Goddard skips across the line, goes to the backhander, and it's off the target. The buck squirted all the way to center ice. Right. Cathedral coming down, Fenton in with a shot. Diaz couldn't hold that rebound again. He zipped it into the corner. One nothing for Springfield Cathedral, the Western Mass champion. That puck went in on Mastriani, and he covered up on the play in the play a minute and uh, 32 seconds. One to nothing. And the scoring play check, Morgan Stern from Gallagher and Sicheria at 50 seconds. One nothing. Springfield Cathedral leading Winthrop. Well, it was obvious from the drop of the puck uh, right at the start of the game. Winthrop was not as as up for this game, uh, they might be taking it too lightly. They looked very sluggish in the beginning. Cathedral beat into the puck a few times, and it resulted in a goal after uh, Diaz let the puck uh, get away from him. And, Steve, uh, I noticed one thing. Cathedral likes to play the man. True, Dobby. In the beginning, they were just dumping it in also, and I think that's what they'll do now with the one nothing lead, wait for another break. Westrup sends out their third unit. Jackie Brugman, Janaco, and Masterson. On the forward way, Benny Goodlane and Ellis. Cathedral trio. Ellis got it back towards the point. The Sersha let one go. Crombie was upended in the crease area for Winthrop. The Vikings having uh, enormous difficulty. Clark, here comes Cathedral in on goal. Oh, they shot it wide. And uh, Benny had a big chance. The Vikings really on the run here in the early going. Now then, uh, Masterson gets started for the Vikings. The lead pass, it looks like it's offside. You couldn't even hear the call. And there's no question, Lance, that Springfield Cathedral are riding the crest of the great enthusiasm and the adrenaline flowing early in the game. one nothing. Cathedral over with it. This is the Massachusetts State Championship game from the Boston Guard. The four seat. The West won the East, no score. The puck rolled in front there to Diaz, and he corralled that one with the glove. And uh, we talk a little bit about the enthusiasm of this Springfield student body. They came in about 25 buses, Darby, and uh, 
Many of them have never been to this uh, Boston before, and they're just excited to uh, say the least. Well, the tallest building in Springfield is uh, a hardly what you'd call a skyscraper, and I'm sure they're awed by the whole situation, especially this building. Tate is going up against Gaw on the faceoff for a Springfield in Cathedral. Now well, then, uh, number 20, Placius is trying to get some face to manipulate. He got as far as the line. Tate carried in. Placius trying to shoot it there to center, and it goes out towards the red checkered line. Got it. Let's one fly. It stopped in midair there by the defenseman, Hoggia, uh, Piokia. P-I-O-G-G-I-A. Is that how you pronounce that, Derby? Piogia? Piogia, and I'll tell you one thing. As far as the enunciation and pronunciation of names, you get a full workout, all the way from uh, Polish through Italian well, and uh, including they, everything in between. Until they get to the <laughs> reserves like Albano and uh, Demonica. <laughs> Harrington's in there. I hope you see some ice time. Robert McDonald who led all Eastern Mass hockey scorers uh, this winter season is out there centering Joe McDonald and Jackie Burke. And what a trio they formulate. They'll be receiving an award on Wednesday night at our Hockey Night Banquet. Uh, now then, Fenton tried to get it over there to Giblin. And it's sent back down into Cathedral territory. Burke held it in there. They come in front of the net. And a big defensive maneuver by Siasia. To block that centering pass. The big line for Winthrop are on the ice. They're in there to forecheck. Number 19 is Rodgers. He failed to clear it out. Bobby McDonald broke a shot. And it hit the defenseman. Uh, Siasia, there'll be a penalty here. And let's see. Looks like Cathedral will be assessed the initial sentence. Andrews is going to be thumbed off here. He gets the finger. Andrews, a senior at six foot 160, and he certainly has the physical credentials. A star goalie on the soccer team, and during the season, shown a fine deportment in the offensive category as well. 25 points. And a co-captain. They have four co-captains on this cathedral team. The face-off to the left of Mastriani. Danny Brugman starts that play from the point position. McDonald to Burke to go again. There's the shot. The rebound. Right in front of the net. And it, they're all around the cage. Cathedral tried to shoot it out. Brugman held it at the point. There's Bobby McDonald twisting and turning. Getting set for Burke in front. Oh, right in front of the net again. Got it. Has it at the point. Slides it to Bobby McDonald. McDonald going in. He shoots it a mile wide. <laughs> and the puck now goes up into the crowd. Oh, did that one have velocity, Steve? No question. Couldn't even see it until it went wide and bounced off. He wound up about, from about 12 feet out. I'm sure Ed Burns, if he's here, is just uh, licking his chops on his... Uh, no slap shot theory. Bobby McDonald, Joe McDonald, Jackie Burke. Goddard and Danny Brugman on the fence. Cathedral intercept, they shoot it down the ice. Fenton getting the job done. And now they send out to kill this penalty. Morgenstern, Joey McDonald. Gets across the line for Brother Bob. Blocked on the shot. The rebound. Kick out stop by Mastriani. And there's his best stop yet. The puck went up into the cathedral bench. And this Siercia. Very close to that name a couple of years ago for Arlington. Cassia. And uh, he has shown at least two or three blockages of shots in front of the cage. Mastriani made a... Decent maneuver there on that shot by Burke. Big pad save, and I'll tell you something. I'm sure Cathedral's never seen anything like the Winter Power play. That's true, Dobby. During the course of the season, though, they had an uncanny knack of 
killing off penalties at a tremendous rate, but as you say, against this winter power play, could prove to be quite different. 17 seconds remaining on the infraction to Jeff Angers. Now McDonald trying to get this last offensive maneuver on the power play into operation. He skips the cross the line going in on goal. And the goaltender stopped him. Rugman at the line. Takes the shot. They lost control. The penalized player is out of the penalty box. Benton going in on goal. A shot. The rebound. He has it in front. They try to get it over there to Mergenstern. And it's been a decent first five minutes of action. Boy, that cathedral, they came awful close to going two goals up right there. Uh, Joey McDonald went across the line, then he got stopped by Yogia. He shoots it down the ice. McGee went back to get it. Looks like we may have a penalty here on Cathedral for too many men on the ice. The official has his hand raised. Diaz went to the bench. Now then, Wacky is trying to get it out front. It was blocked. They got it out back to the point, and McGee took a shot. There's the penalty, and there'll likely be too many men on the ice. That's the call, no question. one nothing. the score continues. Cathedral over Winthrop. This is the state championship game from the Boston Guards. For the freshest... <laughs> Springfield Cathedral 1. Uh, Winthrop Vikings no score, and we're in the first period. Jack Morgenstern from Gallagher and uh, Cicera at 50 seconds. That was the long goal of the game by Cathedral, but they're now getting themselves in tempered water with penalties. That's right, and uh, Moriarty, I believe, is serving the in too many men on the ice infraction. Brugman goes to right wing. Blackius and Tate are the other forwards. Brugman back to the point for Crombie. God is just waiting there. There's the shot, hit the post. And it was on the outside. Brugman still has that puck for Winthrop. Working in, getting closer, takes the shot. They're all around the cage again. And Winthrop have made a fair practice of that positional play. Blackius for Tate. He walks in right to the side of the net. Bruckman had to go behind the cage. Now they're all in the same area. Bruckman shoots, gets the rebound, scores! He ties the score, 1-1. Danny Bruckman, and what a play from the corner. He came out. And the most valuable player, winner of the Brigham's Trophy, and he gets his team on the scoreboard, and he scores big goals when he scores them. Very costly penalties as a cathedral team. Bugman made a fine play. He came in, and the defenseman, Piogia, blocked the shot with perfect timing, as the cathedral club has been doing often so far in this game. But unfortunately for him, the puck went right back to Bugman, who made no mistake about it. Clearing the puck in behind Mastriani, and we're now in a 1-1 game. And I have to say, Brugman and Joey McDonald, they've got the most incredible dance after they score goals in the all of high school hockey, both of them. Once they've come right in off the drawer again like vultures. That's a 1-1 game. There's Bobby McDonald, ever so deceptive. In for Joe, the backhander. It hit the defense there. They're all around the cage. Score! Winthrop comes back to get that second goal. Looks like Jackie Burke kicked it in, but he was pushed, so it's going to count. No question. Wasn't an intentional kick. They were trying to body him out in the slot area, and it just hit his skate, went in. Montreani had no chance at all. It just deflected right off his skate, went right in between his pads. Rolled into the net, and Winthrop has completely dominated now. You can sense, just by the way they are passing the puck, they are in complete control. Cathedral better watch out before they're blown out of here in this first period. Danny Bergman scored the first for Winthrop to tie it after Morgan Stern jumped out from tape, a power play goal, and we'll wait for the official on that one. I believe Burke will get it. Winthrop 2 and...
Grand Cathedral won. Now it sounds like they're giving it to Bobby McDonald, Darby. Well, they certainly are, and uh, that's a discretionary call. And they're in front of the net. Cathedral had a chance. And now Woodruff returns. McDonald Joe over the ball. Back to Joe. But right into Mastriani. And the game has picked up in acceleration. McGee shot it in offside. Ellis of Springfield Cathedral had a decent chance. Uh, as Diaz is not seeming to get in front of that puck as effectively as he's done in the Eastern Mass Tournament because he's left rebounds. And in that case, Ellis, just a sophomore, six foot 165, uh, he was forced to a backhander on a rolling puck. But, boy, he had quite a chance. Okay, the official on the go-ahead goal for Winthrop, Bobby McDonald. His 41st of the season, unassisted at 7.28, exactly 20 seconds between the two Winthrop goals, and they love to score them in bunches. Uh, Cathedral are not hurting for uh, recruits, though. They got, they need two benches over there. <laughs> and they got about six goaltenders. <laughs> They'll likely not see much action, though. Now that take got it, center ice. Brugman went in on the right side. Tape. Back to the point for Globally. Dumped it behind the cage. The Gallagher tried to get started for Cathedral. They shoot at the center. Globally hit Morgenstern with the puck. Tape tried to kick it ahead. The Gallagher now shoots it down the ice. Diaz. Left it for Crombie. A lead pass for Tape at center. But off his pass, he's coming in. Tape in with a shot. And there's the goaltender, Mastriani, coming way out to block the shot. Blackius couldn't for the life of him understand why he didn't get a pass. Now Blackius tripped up a cathedral player. There'll be a penalty. And he tripped up Gaw for no obvious reason whatsoever. Well, Gaw certainly showed that the Western Mass teams know how to employ the Academy Award performances that time. As uh, uh, Plakius went streaking by him, but he didn't touch him, Lance. Dave Gaw just took the dive, and uh, he got the call. Well, I don't know about that. It seemed like he definitely hooked him for no reason whatsoever, though. I think it was a bit perturbed uh, that Tate didn't even... Uh, Try to negotiate a pass when they had that two-on-one break. Didn't well, even look at him. Actually, Brugman, the trailer, had the best chance of them all. He was left unattended and behind tape. Well, this gives the uh, Cathedral their first man advantage, and uh, they've surrendered a power play goal and are trailing two to one. Let's see what they can do. Well, I think it was a combination of the two, a little bit of acting plus a little bit of the uh, stick in there. But now Cathedral will try to tie this game up, trailing 2-1, to 5.54 remaining in the first period. Now they have managed 38% on the power play, this Cathedral club. Now then Fenton went down there to check McGee behind the net. They try to get a face-off, and one of the officials justifies that termination of the play. Now let's see, Morgan, uh, Morgan Stern will go to left wing. Uh, Fenton at center, and uh, number eight, Kenny, is out there. Kenny's at right wing for this particular power play. The defense have Angers and Piogia uh, at the point. The puck was sent it out. McGee made a good play Was Fenton. In the crease area. Now they go against the boards. Tape just dribbling that puck. Get it over to McGee. Brugman's going to try to clear. Oh! And number three, Piotia, really decked him. That Brugman never seems to be bothered. <laughs> he got right up. He got his number, though. Well, let's see how that one developed. There are threes really smashing into each other. Well, Fenton carried across the line. The official hesitated. That was way offside. Fenton's at center. Morgenstein on the right side. And now Kenny at left wing. Yogia and uh, number 16, Jeff Andrews, are the defensemen. Tape 
and Brugman up front to kill the penalty, which has 42 seconds left before it expires. Got it on the defense, slapped it over to tape, and he drills it down the ice. Mastriani was really mesmerized there for about a three-minute span when Winthrop scored two in a row. One on the power play, and then 20 seconds later, a buzz sawing in front of the net. Well, uh, Cathedral having all kinds of problems here with the man advantage. They're sent into their own territory again. Uh, Piogia is going to give it a try. Here's Kenny down the left side, skips around, McGee going in with a drive, and it went off, got it. Now the both teams are at full strength. The ice looks a bit slow out there, to say the least. Goddard, getting set, takes it to center, he shoots it down as Winthrop change on the fly. Masterson went in along the boards with Yogia, and they tie it up. And this game's coming to you from the Boston Garden. Winthrop 2 and Springfield Cathedral 1. And we're in the first period with 349 remaining. East versus West. Part 2. Bill Ricker won part 1 on Saturday night by, well, they scored two touchdowns, an extra point, and surrendered but a field goal to Pittsfield. But Pittsfield got the first goal. Cathedral duplicated that beat in the first minute. They're trailing now two to one. Globally. Watch Vinny Michael do quite a fancy maneuverability job of surrendering the disc. It's in along the boards. Vinny there. Tried to hand it off to Giblin. Cathedral is asserting themselves here a bit with 304 remaining. Now Burke had enough of that. He's gonna take over at center. Right down the center slot. Over to Joey McDonald. Crombie at the point. Couldn't keep it in. Now he shot it off the board. And uh, Cathedral take over. A drive. Broke off of Diaz. This anger is a pretty decent player defensively. He's got quite a shot. And he has a very unorthodox mask. Oh, uh, that new uh, barbed wire type of... Arrangement in front there, chicken uh, wire. A birdcage type of situation like in football, uh, very close to Peter Carnivale of uh, Beverly. Same type of facial gear. Formerly of Beverly, I might add. <laughs> oh, we have two members of the Springfield team that like to pull their weight on a little bit. Uh, Tony uh, Biogia and also Brian Kenny has decked a few Winthrop players, but uh, the Vikings have not been intimidated out there. They really haven't gotten a high gear except for three minutes. They're in front of the net, Cathedral. Oh, Diaz has looked awful shaky. Morgenstern sent it out to hit Diaz on the pad. Nearly went in. The Viking defensive uh, left a lot to be desired. Got it. Is upended on the play, but he manages to shoot it down the ice. Brugman went into the corner. Surrendered that disc to Morgenstern. Takes the shot over the cage and the uh, cathedral student body they go crazy on any any time a purple and white player touches that puck brugman uh, took a check from kenny tape was on the move let's go with a shot a uh, very harmless one there on mastriani got it let one go from the point on a hesitation maneuver benson gets started at center Puts on the brakes and let's go with a weak shot. Looked like he was going to tee one up and then took a aimless shot. And Cathedral, get out front of the net! Oh, the rebound! It's gobbled up by Plakius. What a chance for Kenny. Brugman going in. Shoot! And Mastriano, the big kickout maneuver there on the short side. Back to the point for Goddard. Tried to get it back to Brugman. 112 remaining. The first bird. Bobby McDonald going in with a shot. And he stared it wide of the cage. McDonald has been fairly inaccurate in the contest. As a matter of fact, the goal he scored uh, 
was a shot nowhere near the cage. It hit the goaltender and went in. But uh, you can't fault Cathedral. They've had their chances. Well, especially uh, the one on a clearing pass out in front of the net. It hit the leg of Gordon. And fortunately for Diaz, his pad was in the right spot because he didn't even see the puck, and it just deflected off his pad. Uh, whereas if it was off a couple of inches, a little bit of luck, the puck would have gone into the net. Well, they play the man, and they're taking the defensemen out in the winter corners, and that's enabling a lot of anxious moments for Raymond and Diaz in the winter for zone. 53 seconds. Remaining in the first period, 2-1 to one for the Vikings. Benton crossed the line for Cathedral. Dipsy Doodle into the corner. Took a check from Goddard. Joey McDonald for Bob. 35 seconds left. Over to Burke. Back to McDonald. And Anger's got his stick in the way. Fenton got it center ice. Lost it to Goddard. For Joey McDonald. One more rush. Over to Bob. Back to Joe Gregg. let goal. go. Oh, he missed on the backhander. Split off his stick. They tried to send it out in front. Oh, can they pass that puck? Well, ice looks bad, though. Six seconds remaining. A shot in on Dias, a rebound. Goes into the corner. And the period ends. Now the score. Winthrop 2 and Springfield Cathedral 1. And this is the state championship game from the Boston Garden. Back at the Boston Garden, this is Steve Melvillo, along with Lance LaFaro and Darby Yeager. Of course, this is the state finals, the championship game between the Eastern Division winner, Winthrop, and the Western state finalist, Springfield Cathedral. This is how the first period went. The score currently now 2-1 to one in favor of Winthrop. To start off the game, Springfield got its only goal of the period. At the 52nd mark was all it took, as Jack Morgenstern got the goal, assist going to Gallagher and Czechia, and it was 1-0 Cathedral as Winthrop was very sluggish in the first couple of minutes of the first period. Then a couple of penalties to Cathedral, which proved to be costly, the first of which was at 4.03 for hooking Jeff Angers. They successfully killed the Viking power play by uh, clearing the puck many times. They killed that very well, as they had oftentimes during the season. But then they got a very costly penalty for too many men on the ice. And believe it or not, Springfield had only three men on the ice following the penalty. They put one player back out there. Then finally they got back to five skaters. And Winthrop actually had a power play right there. But in the ensuing minute and 30 seconds that uh, Cathedral was shorthanded, Danny Bruckman got a power play goal at 7.08. His second of the tournament, his 14th of the season from Tate. That tied the score at 101. Only 20 seconds later, Bobby McDonald, who else, got his first goal of the game, his sixth of the tournament, 35th of the season, unassisted at 7.28 to give Winthrop its current 2-1 to one lead. Shots on goal for the first period, Winthrop leading in that category, 17 to Cathedral's 12. Penalties, Winthrop had one for a minute and 30 seconds, while Cathedral had two for three minutes, and that second penalty being costly, the power play goal by Danny Buckman. So goal scorers for Cathedral, Jackie Morgan Stern, Paul Winthrop, Danny Buckman, and Bobby McDonald. We'll return with our between period guest here at the Boston Garden. Yeah, at the Boston Garden, and it's two to one Winthrop leading Springfield Cathedral, and I'm delighted to have with me one of the main sponsors of the Hockey Night Series all season long, not just the uh, tournament finals there, and that's of course East Coast Aerotech, and also with me, uh, Mr. John Griffin Jr. And uh, John, welcome to Hockey Day in Boston. Well, thank you, Darby. This has been one fine first period of hockey. I don't think the score is reflective of just how good this game has been. Well, actually it is, but that second uh, Winthrop goal was not really the most exciting thing I've ever seen. It's been a very even game. That Springfield group is really fired up. Okay, John, East Coast Aerotech, why are they involved with schoolboy hockey? Well, at East Coast, of course, we're a post-secondary school, and we're the type of school that cannot support its own athletic program. And I, I for one, think athletics is a, a great part of development for young people. So we're doing what we can to get involved with a, with a secondary level. Okay, in 19 months, uh, it's in our Hockey Night in Boston yearbook. Everybody commented on it. 
power play. That was the key to it. And uh, you had the uh, picture of the uh, jet engine. And, uh, of course, there's something else that East Coast Aerotech is involved with this year, and that's the East Coast Aerotech Trophy. That's right, Darby. Uh, this year we're awarding a trophy to the top scoring line in Division One, and uh, I don't think I have to tell anybody who that is. Uh, we've seen a pretty good display tonight. Well, there's no question, but I think uh, perhaps on Wednesday evening uh, we will be, uh, uh, oddly enough, it'll be St. Patrick's Day uh, for the McDonald brothers in Burke to receive that trophy. Well, I'll wear green for that one, and uh, I think there's a lot of hockey players around that'll be green with envy. <laughs> no question about it, especially when they see this trophy, which uh, uh, is quite a creation, I'd have to say. I think I'll rent a station wagon to bring it over. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the uh, North Shore audience uh, in predominance here tonight. Of course, East Coast Aerotech, once again, one of the main sponsors with us all season long. Uh, I understand uh, that uh, things are going very well over there. Uh, things are really looking up. Uh, aviation is well out of what you could consider the depression or the recession. Uh, right now, the sale of private aircraft is, uh, is running for the third year in a row right now, the best in history. And with as aircraft, more aircraft go into service, needless to say, the demand for the technicians to maintain them goes up accordingly. So uh, we're very optimistic. Things are looking awfully good for our graduates. Very good, John, and thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know uh, you had a flight in here for, and you're up uh, since 6 o'clock this morning, and thanks a lot. Thank you, Darby, and I'm looking for the second period. If it's as good as the first, we're, we're in for a wild night. See you Wednesday, eh? Yes, I'll be there, and uh, we're in the green. <laughs> Very good, John. John Griffin, Jr. of East Coast Aerotech. I'm delighted to have him with us here this evening. More intermission highlights as Hockey Night continues from the Boston Guards. More handsomely finished. Okay, back at the Boston Garden. This is Stephen Melano. Uh, so far, the score, of course, Winthrop 2 and Springfield Cathedral 1. Game started off on the opposite side as Jack Morgenstern only took 50 seconds to give Springfield Cathedral a 1-0 lead. At that time, the crowd on Springfield was really going wild. The excitement had really mounted. It, it had, this had been coming on since the starting lineups, as a matter of fact. They've quieted down a little bit now, but their spirit has been unparalleled so far in the tournament. They're outnumbered here by the Viking crowd, but uh, the, I'm sure the team, the Cathedral team, could feel this excitement, and it also let the Springfield Cathedral Club get up for this game. They were up by a one-quick goal, but then two penalties were very costly. The first one to Jeff Angers. They killed that one successfully, but then the second one for too many men on the ice, which was served by Danny Moriarty cost them dearly as Danny Bruckman scored a power play goal at 7.08 to tie the score at 1-1. Then only 20 seconds later, Bobby McDonald had an unassisted goal that was deflected out in front of uh, one of the Springfield Cathedral defensemen's skates. Unfortunately, Mastiani could not make the save. He wasn't even aware of the puck uh, being deflected, and it went in the net. So for Bobby McDonald, 35 goals in the year is sixth of the tournament. For Danny Bruckman, his 14th of the year, second of the tournament. That gave Winthrop a 2-1 lead. Winthrop did have one penalty in the period coming at 9.06 for tripping Paul Plackius. And it was a little bit of acting, a little bit of a trip also. And that's where we are now. The score, Winthrop 2 and Cathedral 1. Shots on goal, as I told you earlier, Winthrop out shooting by 5 over Cathedral. But the momentum of the game has clearly switched over to the Vikings. In the beginning, they came out a little bit sluggish, maybe a little bit overconfident. But right now, clearly, Winthrop is in control. We will return to the Boston Garden. Springfield Cathedral 1. This is Lance LaFaro along with Steve Memolo, Darby Yeager, our Hockey Night Boston presentation. Uh, Schoolboy Hockey in Eastern Massachusetts featuring the Western champion Springfield Cathedral and the Eastern Mass Division One champion for 1975-76. The Winthrop Vikings. The Vikings still undefeated, Steve. That's right, Lance. They still are, and they're on their way to an undefeated season if they can just cape it off right now, cap it off with this victory against Springfield. The momentum of the game has clearly changed from the opening minutes of the first period when Springfield was in charge. Right now, the Viking team are a little bit more spirited and fired up, and they have controlled the tempo of the game. The passing has been crisp on the power play. You could feel that it was only a matter of time 
before they were clicking, Bobby McDonald came up with the power play goal to give Winthrop this one goal advantage. Well, their two goals were spread 28 seconds apart. Uh, Danny Brugman is second of the tournament, 16th of the year at 7.08 and then 7.28. The Bobby McDonald marker is 41st of the season. And uh, McDonald is within three or four points of the 100 point mark of this season. And uh, of course, we are not counting two games of playoff nature in the Northeast Conference that really didn't contribute towards the final standings or uh, tournament eligibility. So we cannot count those games. Otherwise, you would be over the 100 point mark. But uh, coming into the contest tonight he well he's picked up another goal here so he has 10 points add that to 85 95 points not a bad season I would say uh, quite a season that's the understatement of the year actually but it's a possibility if Winthrop can come on and pick up enough goals win by a big enough margin maybe Bobby McDonald could come up with a five points so far his line has uh, has contributed, of course, as everybody knows by now, very heavily to this Winter Viking team. So we'll have to see if uh, McDonald can ach achieve his feat of 100 points in this season. The goaltenders certainly warm up with different styles. Mastriani, the cathedral netminder, it has all kinds of calisthenics uh, down there in his net area where Diaz just uh, kind of nonchalantly looks at the crowd. But that's their style. The play is underway in the second period. Winthrop are leading two to one over the Western Mass champion, Springfield Cathedral. The puck went down and uh, hopped up on top of the netting. And Diaz, he gives it a little backward kick there with the skate. And we'll have a face off to his right. Looks like McGee and Bud it will start on defense. The McDonald brothers and Burke. We've got Gaw, Morgan Stern and Gallagher, the forward unit for Cathedral. They struck early in the first period after 50 seconds. That Winthrop came from behind and took a 2-1 lead at the end of 15 minutes. Now then Gallagher came across the line and went out to center ice. Morgan Stern, who has the only goal for Cathedral, whipped it down into Viking territory. Goddard went behind his own cage. Left it for McGee. He's had a fine tournament. The football quarterback for the Vikings. Here's Bobby McDonald coming in. Over for Burkhart to McDonald. And he was behind the netting and he couldn't dump it in. Great two-way passing play, McDonald and Burke, but they passed once too often. And, Absolutely, uh, man, excuse me. Uh, they made a great give and go there, but actually uh, I thought Burke had a better shot than uh, Bobby McDonald did. And he's a fine goal scorer, as would be indicated by his well over 30 goals this year, and he's only a junior. But his biggest goal, I would imagine, would have to be that one against Norwood at the four minute mark of triple overtime to defeat the Mustangs. Bobby McDonald came across the line, tried to turn defenseman Barry, went to the point guard and took a bouncer, went into the corner. Now then Andrews tried to get started. Fenton got as far as the line. McGee shot it in on Mastriani. He missed it, fortunately, it was wide of the cage. Went to kick it out and never got a piece of it. Fenton, last Sue's one in there. Fenton went in to get it. McGee pinned him to the boards neatly. Danny Brugman tried to get started. Now that Fenton got it in front of the net and Diaz went down to block a shot. Winthrop are guilty at times of failure to clear. The puck from their defensive zone. Pokia. Went 
from two and Springfield Cathedral one. There'll be a penalty to the Vikings. A goaltender. Mastriani was yanked, but not in sufficient time to allow Cathedral to employ a sixth attacker. And the Vikings walk into a second infraction in the game in the first of the period. Well, this will now even it up with two penalties apiece. Last time, Cathedral had the power play advantage. Winthrop completely controlled the puck and the minute and a half. They did not come up with a short-handed goal, but they came close a couple of times. Two to one now. Springfield Cathedral is feeling they have a power play for a minute and a half. 11.55 remaining in the second period. The emotion has died down quite a bit on the Cathedral side, but this penalty has helped to uh, burst them up just a little bit, which might inspire their power play unit. Benton, uh, Kenny, and uh, Morgan Stern are the forward unit for Cathedral, Piogia, and Angers, the defenseman. Angers at the point, winds up for a shot. There's a rebound in front of the net, and the Dias corrals that disc and is lying flat on his back. But this Cathedral team are a much better unit than many anticipated would present themselves at this game tonight. A minute 20 remaining on the infraction to Crombie. Tape and Danny Brugman are the penalty killers along with McGee and Goddard. Tape against Fenton. Winthrop win the draw, they fail to clear. It's at the point, a kick out. Saved by Diaz and it went all the way down the ice. Jeff Angers has impressed me from a defensive position. Here he's got that puck across the line. One of the few to have a blue helmet on that Springfield club. They get it across there for Piogia, who split in from a defense position. Now it's shot down the ice by Brugman. Well, Diaz made his uh, best save of the game. It was not a spectacular save, but it was a good one. He looked a little bit more confident than he had earlier in the game. He was not as sure of himself as he has been in the other tournament game. Kenny took a shot as he hit the Viking blue line, and it was gloved by Diaz. Diaz is not large. He's 5'7", 140 pounds. He was the backup netminder a year ago to Ken Lorenz. Now at New Hampshire, I believe he's still there. Not playing too much as their season has terminated. Rather unceremoniously, I might add. But, as so often happens in tournament play, Yogia in with a shot, and he whistled that one off the target. Fenton, crisscross with Kenny, they seem to be going in opposite directions and uh, did not come up with a scoring chance. The puck was shot to center ice. 14 seconds remaining on number 14, Crombie of Winthrop. Fenton got that puck back a shot and that's off the cage. Cathedral have had their chances on this power play. And they nearly got another. Now then, Crombie's out of the box. Brugman starting in two on one, going in. And a big defensive maneuver by Angers. The puck came to the point. McGee took a shot, and that was deflected at least by two players. Tape, both teams at full strength. Over to Brugman. Joey McDonald. Back to Joey McDonald, front of the goal. Oh! What a chance by Tate. It's in front of the cage. They're all around the net. And Mastriani made two marvelous stops. And Tape had just a sensational scoring opportunity. And he fired it wide. Well, Springfield now clearing the puck back to center ice. Right. They've had some problems here in this last minute and a half. Trying to clear the puck out of the zone as Winthrop has been all over them. And now we have Bob McDonald coming on with Jackie Burke. So Winthrop now applying the pressure. Cathedral trailing two to one in the game. Get it out to Fenton. He came across the line and he rifled that shot. 
just off the target area. Goddard was lassoed there by Fenton, no call. Then he took a bump from Kenny. The shot! Oh, there's Dias! Left it right in the crease! Well, Kenny uh, is going to be called for a penalty. It wouldn't have counted anyway, but Dias came up with a good left skate save on a good low hard shot, but it wouldn't have counted anyway, as I believe Kenny is going off for a minute and a half, and he didn't like the call whatsoever, Lance. This game's coming to you from the Boston Garden. <laughs> The Vikings are leading 2-1, to one and they have the power play. In operation, Brugman tried to go negotiate that pass with Bobby McDonald. Goddard picks up the loose puck. He hits the line. Back for McDonald. Intercepted by Andrews. Andrews sports the center. Takes the shot. Dias loved it. And he has looked very, very Shaky in the nets for Winthrop. Now uh, Burke losing it to Fenton. Fenton there doing a nice job of killing this penalty. Cross the line with Marcus going in with a drive. Ooh! He didn't miss by much. It bounced off of Diaz, and the Vikings are playing of a nonchalant nature. Here they come in front of the net, Fenton. Oh, Cathedral having good scoring opportunities despite being down a man. Here's Jackie Burke, back for McDonald Bob. Split along the boards, there was no one near him. I don't know when I've seen Winthrop so lethargic. Kyogia got that puck in the circle and he shoots it down the ice. Winthrop didn't have a shot on goal during that extra man advantage, and Cathedral had at least two or three opportunities. Well, they did, Lance, and uh, Paul Fenton has had numerous opportunities for the Springfield Club, but he is really exhausted. He barely made it off the ice. He's been on there a lot. A lot of, he's logging a lot of ice time, and right now, he, as you can see him down on the ice now, is he's exhausted, and it's only halfway through the second period of play. Midway point of the hockey game, 7.30 left in the second period. Shots of the second period, Lance, eight for Springfield Cathedral, zero for Winthrop. The Vikings holding on to a slim two-to-one margin. And they have been outplayed by a fair distance here in the second period. Now then, Finney comes across the line. It's gloved by Diaz. I think that one was offside. Anyway, there'll be a face-off in the red dot outside the Winthrop line. I, I can't recall all year where Winthrop would go seven minutes and 30 seconds without a shot on goal, but uh, that's the way it has been in the second stanza. I think they've been very lax a days ago and disorganized throw. The official fell down, and that's been a common practice. Here's Springfield Cathedral in front of the net. And Binney had an opportunity. They are using the body very effectively. And Winthrop, they cannot seem to adjust at this point. Now Binney at the line for Angers. The shot! The rebound! And Ellis nearly batted it home. Now the Vikings come to center. A lead pass for Janaka going in on goal. He shoots it over the top of the net. And they've yet to hit the target on a single occasion here in the second period. There's the shot. He scores! Janaka! And as so often happens, this Viking team will be outplayed and then they'll come up with a quick one. They always do it. All season long, Springfield Cathedral has poured nine shots on Diaz, and he was shaky on every one of them, Steve. They come back at one shot on goal, and they score. What a tipping from Janaco. He was a good 25 feet from the cage, and uh, Marciani had no chance at all. It beat him to the club side, and it was actually going uh, past the post on his right side, and then it was on his left all of a sudden on the tipping by uh, Janaco. Uh, 
Antonio De Nera, the coach, has uh, pulled his club off to the bench area and uh, is trying to regroup them. They played a solid eight and a half minutes here in the second period. After surviving a two-goal Winthrop breakout in 28 seconds, or at least 20 seconds in the first period, and uh, they seem to be coming on very strong. And why they didn't score the tying goal uh, is beyond many of maybe the 10 or 12,000 that are here, but I don't know how they'll react to this. Well, I'd have to say the next goal will be a big goal. If Cathedral gets it, they'll be right back in it. However, if Winthrop pulls out three goals here, watch out. Winthrop intercepted that pass out. Brugman cutting in on a sharp angle, centered it to tape, and it's intercepted by Morgenstern. He has the lone goal for Cathedral. A drive, ricocheted off, got it. Right in front of the net, they tried to get it out in front. Morgan Stern, Goddard, has not had one of his better games defensively, and neither have any of the Winthrop players. Uh, they seem to have surrendered the puck more times than not in their own end. Now they shoot it down into Cathedral territory. Hogia gets started there for Morgan Stern. Takes the shot, Dias just kicks it into the corner. Uh, you, you wonder if he takes this game serious. Gets the job done, though. Danny Brugman cleared it down the ice. I don't know whether Winthrop have been celebrating this week or not, but they, they don't look like they're going all out. But they're leading 3-1, to one, and that's the important factor in the game. 5.17 remaining in the second period. Blackius shot at the center, too far for tape. Yogia take a shot on Diaz, and he leaves rebounds all the time. Got it. Out there for Burke, who's that right wing. Feeds down the slot. There's a centering pass right in on Mastriani. And he gloves it with 4.50 remaining in the second period. And this game's coming. If you enjoy it. Winthrop 3 and Cathedral 1. 4.20 remaining in the second period. Jeff Angers shoots at the center ice. McGee. Fired it back in on Mastriani. He had a 1.3 goals against average. This season, he's given up three thus far in the game. He came out to Burke, a turnaround shot. Joey McDonald centered it. WBOS, Footlong. Winds up for the shot, and Mastriani kicked that one out, and the Vikings are starting to take over much like they did in the first period. McGee lost it there to Broaders, intercepted by Bobby McDonald, and he was pounded into the ice. Goddard shoots it to the line. Andrews got it back to center. The one-man show there uh, for Cathedral defensively with Andrews. He, he's really, he's put on quite a game. Now then, uh, McGee hit Kenny on the skate. Fenton tried to get started. He's logged a lot of ice time out there. Fenton for Cathedral. Joey McDonald had to give it there to Brother Bob. Back to Joe. Looking for Burke. There's a Masterson a shot. And the whistle goes as Mastriani gloved that puck. And you'd have to say the McDonald's when they're out there are ever a thread along with Burke. That time, it seemed a very harmless situation developing in the corner. Then Joey McDonald kicked it ahead to Bobby, back to Joey, and there he found uh, 
Masterson all by himself, and they nearly um, lit the lamp again, Steve. One thing for sure, when Bobby McDonald's on the ice, you cannot let the puck roll free for a second. It seems oftentimes when Cathedral's just about ready to clear the puck out of their own zone, here comes Bobby McDonald from behind to scoop up the loose puck, and he always does that. And when Bobby McDonald's on the ice, excuse me, Darby, you just have to clear it out in a hurry. Joe McDonald is uh, uncanny as well as Danny Bergman at that uh, particular antic as well, keeping it in the offensive zone, and they do it with uh, alarming regularity if you're the opposition, and it's n easy to figure out how they were to combine uh, for such a high point total, 210 points in the East Coast Zero Tech Trophy this year. Jackie Bruckman's at center, Janako at left wing, and Masterson on the right side. They scored the third goal in this game, a very important one, as uh, Cathedral definitely were out playing the Vikings by a margin. At least shots on goal, 8 nothing at that stage, or 9 nothing. But such is the story of this year's Winter Club, and they are undefeated in 25 games. Of course, two of them were of the meaningless nature. And the Northeast Conference playoffs, of course, they didn't count for anything, however. Now then, Masterson, Janako. Lost control. It shot back behind the goaltender Diaz. 2.08 remaining in the second period. 3 to 1 for Winthrop. A shot by Jackie Brugman into the corner. Janako gets it to the point. Crombie lost it there. As Cathedral come out, Gallagher whips one into the corner. A minute 45 remaining. Morgenstern went into Crombie heavily along the boards. Now then uh, Masterson to center, crisscrossing with Janako. They shot it to center ice. Now then uh, Globally went behind his own net to pick up that loose puck. A minute 25 left in the second period. Cape is on the ice. Working his way across the line. Goes to the backhander into the corner. Cathedral tried to clear it out. A shot from the point. Went high up on the glass. Tape doing a fencing duel there with number two, Dave Barry of Cathedral. Now the puck is shot in on Mastriani. Puts it into the corner. One minute remaining in the second period. Three to one. For the Eastern Division I champion. Now then, Cathedral coming in. Finney. Failed to get a shot off. Tape slid one along the dasher. Got a return pass there from Brugman. Out to center. A lead pass for Plakius. He went in along the boards. Now then, Binney handing that puck off for Ellis. Showing a fair amount of speed, he takes the shot, and he missed by two and a half feet. 24 seconds remaining in the period. Cathedral whipping one out in front there. Ellis failed to negotiate that Mike Binney pass. It's on the defense for number 16, Andrews. He's been a formidable player out there for Cathedral. Six seconds remaining. Winthrop shot it in on the offside. The play went right on. And there's the buzzer. Ending the second period of score. Winthrop three and Cathedral one. If you enjoy it. Okay, back at the Boston Garden. Steve Mimolo along with Lance LaFaro and Darby Yeager. This is the Division I championship game between the Winthrop Vikings and Springfield Cathedral. In the first period, quickly, the goal scorers for Cathedral, a 1-0 lead at 52nd mark, Jack Morgenstein from Gallagher and Chichia. Then Winthrop tied it up, Danny Brugman from Tape, a 7 away to power play goal. Bobby McDonald, his 41st goal, 35 in the season, 6 in the tournament. At 7.28 unassisted, gave them a 3-1 lead for Winthrop after one period of play. In the second period of play, two penalties for Winthrop. At 3.05, holding Brian Crombie, 
Then at 552 for charging, Brian Tenney went off for Cathedral. The only goal of the second period by Winthrop, Joe Giannaco, a tip in, uh, Gillagy took a shot from the blue line, and from 25 feet out, Giannaco got a stick on it at 827 to give Winthrop their lead of 3-1. to one. Shots on goal in the second period, Springfield Cathedral 12, Winthrop only 5 as they were completely outplayed in the first 730 of the period where they came up shorthanded. Shots on goal after two periods of play, Springfield Cathedral out shooting the Vikings of Winthrop 24 to 22. One penalty apiece in the second period for each team, game total 3 for Cathedral and 2 for Winthrop. Okay, Darby. Jim, lead him in. With the fun transcript, your comments on the game thus far? I'm quite surprised, Dobby. They've completely outplayed us. I'm surprised by their size. Uh, it's just a matter of time before we get unwound. Uh, I think we're going to put a few more shots into the goal. Uh, they've outplayed us. Their goaltender has been superb. Uh, just a matter of time. Okay, prediction on the final score. We're going to check this at the post-game show with you. Six to two. I think the Vikings are going to get unwound. A few power plays will put the puck in the net. Just a matter of time. Okay, Jim. Thanks a lot for stopping by. We'll see you at the end of the game. Thanks, Doc. We'll return with the International House of Pancakes and the at the Boston Garden, Darby Yeager. And the score is three to one in favor of Winthrop over Springfield Cathedral. And I'm delighted to have with me two of the main sponsors, two representatives of the main sponsors of this series, the International House of Pancakes. Mr. Wally Wilson and Tom Lynch, welcome, gentlemen. Welcome, Dobby. Uh, glad to be here this evening. Okay, we're here and very happy to announce with a lot of enthusiasm the winners of the International House of Pancakes Hockey School Scholarship Summer Program with the grand prize winner going to the Orwalton Sports Camp and the local winners to various hockey schools. And Wally Wilson, uh, you handle the people south of the Charles River. Let's start off there. All right, from the Quincy IHOP, uh, Phil Garabedian, the franchisee, the winner in Quincy is Paul Reinhardt, 12 years old. From the Brookline IHOP, manager Larry Parody, we have the winner Paul Lewis, 10 years old. From the Needham IHOP, Paul McLaughlin, the winner Bruce Jacobson, 15 years old. From Brockton, franchisee Ed Williams. <laughs> Okay, back at the Boston Garden, Steve Memolo along with Darby Yeager and Lance LaFaro. The score, as you probably know by now, Winthrop leading over Springfield Cathedral by a score of 3-1. to one. Well, I have a couple of uh, young men here with me, the residents of East Boston, actually, to live very close to the town of Winthrop, Steve Strangey and uh, Ed Palladino. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Well, Steve, what are your thoughts so far in the first couple of periods of hockey? Well, I think that Winthrop's played fairly well, but they're getting off to a late start. After the first, taking them about five minutes before they get going in each period. And if Springfield can score in the first five minutes of this period, I think they may have a chance to beat them. That's very true. They've looked to be very sluggish. Uh, on the whole, maybe they were not as up for this game. Maybe a little bit overconfident, although Dias has left a lot of rebounds out in front of the net. He's looked quite shaky to me. Yeah, he looked very shaky in the first period. Of Spring I know Springfield's out short them so far, but if uh, Springfield had got a few more shots in the early in the first period, they'd be ahead of them right now. Okay, Ed Paladino, what are your thoughts so far? I think that Springfield should come out shooting right away, and that'll be it. They should take, take control of the game right away. It looks as if on a few plays, when Winthrop has a good play developing, they have passed one too many. And instead of taking the quick shots, all right, finally, quickly, a prediction on the score. 6-2. Six, 6-2 six, two. Six, two Winthrop. How about you, Steve? 7-1 Winthrop. 7-1. All right, thank you. Steve Strange and Ed Palladino, a couple of residents. We'll return to the Boston Garden as the Division I final continues. Okay. The teams have returned to the ice surface. And we're moments away from the commencement of the third period. And the goal scoring in the game for Winthrop, Danny Bergman. Opened it up in the first period for the Vikings. Bobby McDonald got the second, and Joey Giannaco the third. Jack Morgenstern got the first goal of the hockey game, but the Cathedral Club has been unable to uh, come back with another lamplighter, and they are facing three unanswered Winthrop goals, Steve. Well, Darby, we're now down to one period of play. We'll end it all 
15 minutes for Cathedral who will make up a two goal deficit against a club that's very hard to come back from. Winthrop for an outstanding offense as everybody knows but Diaz although he looks a little bit shaky has come on with a couple of good saves and if he gets hot in this third period there'll be no way Cathedral could come back. And I think that uh, two things in the game have caught my eye this far. One, uh, the closeness of the game. I really didn't think it would be this close. Uh, all due respect to Springfield Cathedral. Their coach didn't think it would be that coach close. I talked to him earlier this week, and he said, boy, we have to be the decided underdog. And the second thing that has caught my eye is the crowd. There's well over 10,000 here, and uh, it has to be the largest uh, state Division I final I've seen. Now, last week we had over 13,000, but I don't think they're going to match that tonight, but... I wouldn't be surprised if it's 10 or 11,000. And of course, we'd like to thank uh, Sabloni's Restaurant in Winthrop for their fine sponsorship of Period 2 and Myrak Chevrolet in Winthrop. They'll sponsor the third period. 15 minutes remain. As McDonald goes to center, this is the first time that this trio, the high-scoring unit, has started a period. Up against Gaw, Morgan Stern, and Gallagher. Morgenstern has the only goal for Cathedral in the game. They're trailing 3-1. to one. Jackie Burke took that pass there from uh, Joey McDonald. It's called on the offside. And this Wednesday night, we will have our Hockey Night in Boston Awards Banquet at the Holiday Inn in Woburn. And uh, some really spectacular hardware will be dished out. An embassy trophy of Waltham. They do such a great job for us all year long. Uh, provided these trophies and, of course, the sponsors, the many wonderful sponsors, uh, the financial benefactors that uh, help out the youth in the Hockey Night Series. And that'll be Wednesday night. Several of the players out there tonight for Winthrop will receive awards. Now they've played 25 seconds here in the third period. Winthrop are leading 3-1. to one. The West have been uh, manhandled the last couple of years by Malden Catholic and then last year by Matignon. That they are playing a very respectable game through two periods. Tonight, Jeff Anger has got it to center ice. The diminutive Joe McDonald. Bank one off the stick of number 24, Morgan Stern, and went into the crowd. Well, it hit one of the fans uh, right in the forehead, I believe. He seems to be okay. He's bowing his head down now, but uh, he'll be all right. Once again, the goal scorers in the game, Danny Now Brooklyn. there's a fight breaking out behind the netminder Mastriani right in the lower area. They're about seven rows up and all kinds of Airplanes are propelled from the stands, and the play is going to continue. Benson, Tate, and Danny Brugman. Benson seeing uh, his first service that I can recall. Looks like they've broken up that melee. The puck was intercepted. There's a shot, and Diaz looked back into the cage and pried that puck from harm's way. Cathedral start fast in all three periods. And once again, Raymond Diaz at 5'7", 140, showing a continuance of just the larcenous net mining speed throughout the entire tournament. Absolutely, Derby. Especially that Norwood game. I'll never forget that second period when he made two stops that were just incredible. The uh, whistle blew as the face-off was getting underway. The Cathedral are sending Fenton to center, and uh, number 14, his father is the chief of police in Springfield. He's had a very outstanding game at center ice for Cathedral. They're trailing 3-1 to one in the contest, however and have 13 minutes and 37 seconds. This is something about that two goal deficit. And they pin it against the board again. Benson, the senior, six foot 180, has replaced 
Kwakius there on left wing, and I don't know. Kwakius is on the bench. And uh, perhaps he's just receiving a rest here. Well, he's hampered all year with the shoulder separation, and we certainly hope there's no contingencies there. Here's Benny going in. Oh, what a chance for Kenny. Set up beautifully by Fenton and Cathedral. Not out of this game by any stretch of the imagination. Danny Brugman went across the line. Benson into the corner. Kenny spin one off the board. Crombie tried to backhand it in, and it rolled to center ice. Uh, Brian Kenny, the senior, 5'11", 165, was the leading scorer for Cathedral, and he's had numerous chances in the game for Cathedral. The puck slid to the point, the locally a drive, and that's off the target by about four feet. Winthrop hold it in, behind the net, Danny Brugman circling in front, he slid it through the goal crease area, and that was a dangerous maneuver by number three. Winthrop held it in miraculously at the point, Danny Brugman back for Gologli, over for Crombie, and the shot to score! Tate gets the goal, and they mob him. Danny Brugman, he's so uncanny with those high passes. That one was right around his chest, knocked it down with the lumber without raising his stick. I don't know how he does it. That thin part of the stick, he just picks it right out of thin air. Then he shot it in the slot that Tate had just turned around and stuffed it home. But that's Danny Bergman for you. That's one of the many little things he does, uh, almost unnoticed. From the Boston Garden, the Division I Finals will continue. And now they've credited that goal to Benson. Instead of Tate, Cathedral had another scoring opportunity denied by Diaz. The play has opened up again here in the third period with 11.50 remaining. And we'll uh, review that scoring play for Winthrop. They're leading 4-1. to one. Got it. Across the line, takes the shot. A scorching blast that Mastriani had to make just a miraculous stop. Now Masterson pinned against the boards by Angers. They're looking for a face-off. Masterson tried to pry it loose. The play goes right on. Giblin got it to center ice. It hit Janako on the back of the skate, and it was shoved in effectively by Jackie Brugman. There's Masterson being tied up behind the net by Sierra. Whips it off the boards for Ellis. Starting down, gets by McGee. Three on one. They're going in Ghibli. And Diaz pulls off a sensational stop to deny Giblin. Masterson came down. They shot it out to center ice. And Diaz is piling up the stops in this game, Darby. Bobby oh. McDonald crossed the line back for McGee. Takes the shot off the glass. Joey McDonald somehow maneuvers into the corner, wards off Ellis, he still has that puck. McDonald got it into the corner there for Masterson. They're looking to the point for McGee and it was way up in the air. But Giblin was sent in beautifully by Ellis in clean. Here's Joey McDonald, back for Bob, over to Joe, a bouncer. And uh, Yogia took a severe check there from Joey McDonald. The action has really got into a fever pitch. There's Morgan Stern right in front. And Cathedral blow another miraculous scoring opportunity. They've had numerous chances. And they haven't given up for a moment. Bobby McDonald's getting loose at center. Over for Joey McDonald. He's stopped defensively by Dave Barry. Crombie came on the ice. Now Morgan Stern 
Across the line, left it there for Gaw. Going in on goal. And as so often has happened in this game, at the last possible moment, they have relinquished the puck. Joey McDonald, back for Bob. Going in on net. He got that loose puck again. He slid one into the crease area. And Mastriani delicately dropped on the puck. And tempers seem to be stirred up in the corner. And this is the Division I final from the Boston Garden. My rag Chevrolet. Winthrop 4 and Cathedral 1, uh, the state championship game. And uh, the Vikings have been the better marksmen in the contest. And they have a three goal lead with 8.50 remaining in regulation time. The shots have been about as even as you can get. Here's Cathedral, Morgenstern, whipped one in front of the net, but Galogli, who has been possibly the best defenseman out there for Winthrop in the game, shot it to center. Now Crombie gets up ahead of steam, he's nullified at the line. Rodgers carried it in there, and we're going to have a penalty to Crombie, I believe. That would seem to be the assessment. Yes. The official going over to the penalty box. Crombie broke a stick. Now, was he playing with that? I believe he was, Lance. I believe uh, Crombie might be called for uh, playing with a broken stick. Well, so Why far, the... certainly no winter players have entered the penalty box. We'll have to wait and see here. The official still pointing over there. And Crombie finally steps in there after the uh, fake out. Does not work. And he sits down for a minute, 30 seconds there. And Cathedral with eight minutes and 20 seconds to go. Time the key factor for them. They must score here if they have any thoughts of getting back into the hockey game. They send Fenton to center ice. Vinny on right wing and Morgenstern. On the left side, Fenton lost that draw there to got it. Got it, slapped one against the glass. It hit the official right on the stick of Masterson going in. And he stopped there by Angers, although the goaltender, Mastriani, was called to make a save. Masterson has the speed. Now the puck was left at the point for Morgan Stern Diaz. Deflected that one off his glove. Got it. Went one way, then the other. Made a nice move to get by Binney. Now he banks it off the boards down the ice. Pretty bit of stick handling there by Steve Goddard. Well, he hasn't been that outstanding in the game, uh, at least in the tremendous fashion he has throughout the tournament, but he's been sufficient. Andrews is going in. And Goddard was the netminder there again. Morgenstein got it into the crease area in both Diaz and Goddard repel that attack. By the way, if you're looking for a new all-used automobile, why not go up to my rack? There's a Chevrolet. Cathedral have the extra man. Now tape took over. Shot it to the line. Now carries through. Brugman waiting for something to develop. But tape shoots it in on uh, Mastriani. That most recent goal by Winthrop was credited to Benson from uh, Danny Brugman and Crombie at 2.43. Now there's seven seconds remaining on this power play. And Cathedral have been anything but exciting. Now there'll be a penalty here to tape. He hit the Cathedral player right in the face. Oh, I don't know whether that's blood I see there or not, but he is... That looks like Fenton who went down. And he did and it go seemed down. to be uh, accidental. Just as uh, Crombie came out of the box, tape goes in. And the state hockey tournament finals. Went to have goals from Danny Brookman, Bobby McDonald, Joe Giannacco, and Michael Benson. And Jack Morgan Stern scored the first goal of the game way back at the 52nd juncture of the first period. And uh, 
Here we go. We're all set here with the Cathedral power play. And Fenton is back in circulation at center ice on this power play. Jeff Angers. He has been a very exciting defenseman for Cathedral in this game. Lost it, got it, taking a solo rush. Knelt down on one knee there momentarily. Dragon, dragon. Lifted it back to Danny Brugman. Went along the boards. He was hit by Fenton. And he took an elbow there from Kenny. Cathedral started in across the line. They have it at the point position. Fenton over for Piogia. And it slid out to center ice. Andrews trying to get this power play into circulation here. Fenton up to cross the line. That looked like it was offside by Miles. Now there'll be a penalty here to Winthrop for interference. McGee questioning the call. And this will set up really the, the final call for this Cathedral team with 5.57 remaining. Well, we're going to have 37 seconds here. They'll enjoy a two-man advantage. And if they are able to pop one in here, then they'll go, of course, uh, to a one-man advantage, and Steve, this is their last prayer. It certainly is. They'll have the uh, one-man advantage for 53 seconds following this. We have the coach now calling his power play unit over to him for some last-minute instructions. The face-off will be to the right of Diaz, 557 remaining in this season, and if Cathedral are about to mount any kind of an attack here in these final minutes, it'll have to be right now. They'll have to improve upon their accuracy, however. Especially when holding the man advantage. There's Bobby McDonald. He's out there on the penalty killing in a rare role for him. At least in this tournament. Danny Brugman and Goddard are the other two Winthrop skaters. Andrews carried across the line. Brugman shot it off the board. Fenton got that puck. He's sliding in front of the net. There's the shot right through the goal crease. Andrews at the point. Over for Morgenstern. There's the rebound, and Dias held the corner beautifully. One man is out of the box for Winthrop, and they pin it for a face-off. And say what you may about Raymond Dias, he makes the big stop when he has to. We have run out of adjectives in uh, trying to explain the exploits of Raymond Dias in this tournament. Certainly, uh, it came unexpectedly to everyone. Well, he's been playing uh, truly outstanding throughout the tournament, but in the first couple of periods, he was not playing as well as he has been. Maybe the layoff of the seven nights, who knows? But now he's come on in this final period of play. Fenton has shot, and that was kicked out neatly by Dyer. Cathedral hold that man advantage for another 40 seconds. 5.06 remaining in the regulation time, and they're trailing 4-1. to one. Here's Fenton with that puck. He's a beautiful stick handler. Back to Angers. Over to Fenton. They're not getting anywhere, though. Angers takes the shot. It was deflected in front. Oh, Danny Brugman came up with that loose puck, and he just flips it down the ice. This Winthrop club are a very composed unit. And they're four minutes and 35 seconds away from an undefeated season. Tied only once in over 20 games. Now the puck is shot down the ice, and the Vikings have managed to kill off not one, but two successive penalties in a row. Now then, Crombie intercepted that pass. He got it towards the point. And uh, Fenton, before he slides to the bench, clears it to center ice, and he has been the best forward out there for Cathedral by a long shot. Angers and number 16 tape go against the boards. Crombie fell down, got it, works its way over there for Joey McDonald. He bats it down the ice. There's three minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the third period. Winthrop four and Cathedral one. Now then, Mike Finney's coming in, and Goddard nullified that burst of speed. Nearly intercepted that pass. Kenny did. Going in on goal. And Goddard comes up with another 
sparkling defensive play as he put the stick out in front of that shot by Gaw. That's out. five straight minutes on the ice. Four, for out, Jimmy, Somebody's going to have to explain to me how he does that. Joey McDonald left it there right on the stick of Mike Benny. Starts a two-man attack. Cathedral have not given up. They're coming in on goal. And Goddard makes his sixth consecutive defensive maneuver to nullify that two-on-one attack by Cathedral. He has really taken over on the defense. And I think he saved himself for the third period. Got it. For Bobby McDonald. In his last game as a high school athlete. There's a shot by Fenton and Dias. Grabs it. And nonchalantly flips it out. And I tell you, I don't know what profession Dias will go in after this year, but... He might try being a, a bullfighter or something like that. Either a bullfighter or, or a pizza maker. You know, he looked like he was throwing a pizza <laughs> up and just caught it. Just kind of throw it back out towards the face-off circle. Let's try that one again. Well, we were remarking earlier about the fact that Winthrop had scored four goals against MC, Norwood, Arlington, and Braintree. And right now, with 2.38 remaining in this game in regulation, they have four goals again. And maybe four was the... Lucky number for Winthrop. I don't know. Five consecutive games now they're working on. And the fans right now are getting into it a little bit more with the chain of win number one. And it'll mount as a crescendo in the final two and a half minutes. Oh, Diaz. Rob Gallagher from Point Blank Rank. He nullifies another scoring bid. And he's been the story of the game. After a rugged start. Raymond Diaz, 34 shots on Raymond, and he has kept out 33 of them, and that's not a bad ratio. Well, then Jackie Brugman goes to center. Masterson and uh, Janako. The puck squirted there. Cathedral have not given up, boy. They're hovering all around the net. In goes Gar. He tried to center for Gallagher. They flip it into the corner. Here's Gar. He's bowled over by Crombie. Brugman starting out. A lead pass for Masterson. He zips in on the right side. Now then, Angers failed to get it out. Now it's on the stick of Gallagher. He streaks the center ice, hits the line, and he's stopped by Gologly. Masterson shoots it across into Cathedral territory. Angers shot it back to center, a minute 45 remaining. In the third period, Winthrop appear headed for an undefeated season. But Cathedral have surprised everyone with their sparkling play, and they have outshot the Vikings in the game. By a fair margin, I'd say about seven or eight shots, too. Morgan Stern across the line. Got it in along the boards, Gaw. Failed to hold it in at the point position, Angers. Well, they should, uh, they're a young club. They have eight sophomores and nine juniors. Only seven seniors. Of course, they're losing their goaltender and a couple of excellent players. But this Fenton will return. And uh, certainly, they'll be a team of the future. This Fenton's a blue chip of Lance. And as you said, uh, they played their hearts out here today. They've outplayed Winthrop. But so many times this year, they have outplayed, uh, been outplayed and won anyway. They'll have to improve upon their accuracy in the future, though. Here's Ellis going in on goal. Now then, the shot out the center ice. All right. The puck went to center. Goddard has it with 30 seconds remaining. Winthrop are just playing out the affair. Cathedral still working. Here they come across the line. There's a shot by Ellis off the target. Giblin circles the net. Oh, Cathedral have played just a beautiful game. And the three goals are not indicative of the tempo of the game. 
Well, it's been amazing uh, how well Winthrop has played defensively in this tournament. They were noted for their great offensive strength throughout the year, but when they've had to come up with a big save, Diaz has done it. The big play on defense, they have come up with it. And Steve, uh, Jim Lederman has made his way down, and he is uh, in another a state of mind right now. He's quite jubilant. Well, you can talk to him, Derby. I don't want to get kissed. <laughs> 12 seconds. And uh, it is 12 seconds remaining. Morgan Stern. Now then, uh, Mastriani is being relieved in goal. And Santanello will go in. And he's getting quite a rise out of the crowd. He's a senior. And at a 1.3 goals against average entry. Bobby McDonald off the draw with 12 seconds remaining, and that's his number. Starts in, going in with a shot, and Santanello stops. McDonald, one second. The game is over. And Winthrop are now officially the Division I state champions. And with Bill Ricca winning Division II, it was a clean sweep for the third consecutive year for the Eastern uh, champions. Well, the final score, Winthrop 4 and Springfield Cathedral 1. We'll have a complete summary after game interviews with Steve Memolo and the entire Hockey Night crew as the championship belongs to Winthrop. This, this game's coming to you from the Boston Guards. Okay, back at the Boston Garden. Steve Memolo along with Lance LaFaro and Darby Yeager. The Winthrop Vikings have won it all this year, an undefeated season. And fittingly enough, they have defeated Springfield Cathedral here on this final game for the championship, and they have won it all. Goal scores in the game. It started at 52nd as Cathedral got their only goal of the game, scored by Jack Morgenstern. But Winthrop came back with two goals, the first of which by Danny Brugman, a power play goal. The second scored by Bobby McDonald, unassisted. After one period of play, it was 2-1, to one, Winthrop leading over Springfield. Winthrop extended the lead to 3-1 to one as they were outshot 9 to nothing at one point in the second period. But Joe Giannacco on his first shot on net for Winthrop, tipped in a shot by... Gillagy at 8.27 to give Winthrop a lead of 3-1. to one. In the final period of play at 2.43, Mike Benson, his third goal of the season, his first of the tournament from Brugman and Crombie. As Brugman got the puck over to Crombie, he was calling for it. They got it into Benson. He finished it off nicely at 2.43. That's how it ended. There were three Winthrop penalties uh, in the final period of play, giving them a total of five. For the game, Springfield Cathedral had three. Shots on goal, Springfield Cathedral, 11 in the final period of play to only six for Winthrop. They outshot Winthrop surprisingly, 35 for Springfield, 28 for Winthrop, but the final score was Winthrop Vikings four and Cathedral one. Now both clubs are down on the ice and rewarding the trophies, and we shall return to the Boston Garden for the post-game activities. The Vikings have won it all. Experience. The Winthrop Pro Shop invites you to come into their newly expanded store now. Okay, back at the Boston Garden, we now have the uh, Springfield team taking a team picture. Danny Brugman, who was the Eastern Mass uh, MVP, fittingly so, was taking a, a photo over there with uh, goaltender Ray Dyers. We now have Jim Lederman here. Jim, your thoughts about the game? Uh, they certainly surprised us, Steve. It's been a great game, a great season, 25-0. and 0. Uh, They certainly fooled the experts. Um, I'm lost for words, really. There's a great bunch of kids out there, a kid like Joey Janaco tonight, only a sophomore, worked hard all year on the third line, scored his first goal of the year, fittingly, in the final game of the season. Mike Benson, a senior, worked hard all year, a big goal. Steve Goddard, a superb game. Ray Diaz, what can you say about him? They all said he was the weakest link in the team, but in four games, he proved he was the strongest. We're mighty proud of him. The community has come together, and believe me, it's going to be one big celebration in town tonight. Absolutely. They'll be jamming up the Callahan Tunnel now, beeping the horns and everything. Jim, as far as the season was concerned, what would you say was the turning point when the Winthrop Club felt 
that they were the best club in the state. Would you say that Norwood game? I think so. Uh, when we came into the garden, we had quite a few players that hadn't been here before. Uh, it was a big game. I felt that Norwood was, without a doubt, the finest team in the Bay State League and certainly one of the best teams in the tournament. Mike Geller was a tremendous goaltender. The tide turned in that game when Diaz made as big, as big a save as Geller made. Diaz turned around and made a big one. A youngster by the name of Jackie Burke, he turned the Jets on. Kid had 40 goals this year. What can you say? Tremendous effort. That was the big one. We proved to everyone that game. From that point on, we were just flying. That was it. We, had, we knew if we could beat a great Bay State League team like them, go 60 minutes of hockey, we outplayed them, we won, and we were on our way. Jim, do you feel that Diaz, uh, I know there were some questions about his play in the net during the course of the season, do you feel it was the postseason games that he really started to pick up the confidence, or do you feel that uh, Diaz had played this well all, all season long? He played very well all year, but with a youngster by the name of Steve Gordon and a big Kevin McGee in front of him, two superb defensemen, they overshadowed him. He was tremendous. One there, final thing, excuse me, were you surprised at all at the defense of Winthrop? They played exceptionally well uh, in a couple of the games, especially against Arlington in the third period. They came out just dumping the puck and playing defensive style of hockey, uh, which uh, most people haven't been accustomed to. Defense wins games, and we proved it tonight. We proved it in the garden. Steve got it all the way. Tremendous effort. Thanks a million. Okay, Jim, you'll have your chance to uh, throw a little bit about your great uh, performance this year by the Winthrop team on Wednesday evening at the Hockey Night in Boston Annual Awards Banquet, and we're going to have you up on the podium. Fittingly, it'll be St. Patrick's Night. The Irish Lion will get their awards. A young person by the name of Steve got it. It'll be a big night for everyone in Winthrop. Believe me, it'll be my pleasure. I don't know. I've been trying to find that out for a long time. Lederman and Gordon and McDonald. How are we going to get together? Our final comments on the 1975-76 hockey season as Hockey Night continues from the Boston Garden. For the final school this summer. Okay, the all-tournament team at the forward spot were Dan Brugman of Winthrop, Tom Libertini, Bobby McDonald also of Winthrop, his second, uh, second Winthrop player on the squad. On defense, they had Steve Goddard and Steve Rogers, and in the goal, Mike Gula, although uh, the coach of Winthrop, <laughs> Mr. Falaska, had a lot to say about that, Steve, uh, as far as Dyer's outstanding play in the tournament. Steve, your comments on this final game. Okay, with Winthrop winning at 4-1, to one, I thought uh, in the first period, Dyer's was a little shaky in goal. However, he, uh, he seemed to straighten himself out in the second and third period, and it was excellent. It was a, there was a few opportunities that Springfield Cathedral had to get back in the game, and uh, Dyer's just thwarted them all. And in the third period, Winthrop uh, came out and they just showed the superiority. Well, Dyer's had the uncanny knack throughout the postseason play of always, every time the big stop was needed, he made it. Incredible. Well, he certainly showed that way in the tournament. He came up with all the big stops in the tournament against Norwood, Braintree, and again tonight against Springfield Cathedral. Every single time, though, not once, when Winthrop had to have the stop, did he not feel to give Winthrop that stop. Darby? Okay, Steve Mimolo, Steve Dene, the voices of Hockey Night wrap-up all season long, and uh, you've heard their very fine talents displayed here in the Eastern Mass Tournament and um, in the uh, state finals here this evening. And next year they will, in all probability, join the play-by-play -play crew of Hockey Night in Boston. Uh, as we head now, and the question I will leave you with uh, for 1975-76 is who will be one, number one in 1977? For Lance LaFaro, this is Darby Yeager. For Steve Memolo, Steve Dene, uh, Teddy Phillips, who's done a great uh, job all season long, along with Virgil. Uh, Virgil no longer uh, <laughs> in the area. I think he's up in the ski resort, and he's probably listening uh, over the airwaves. Bud Yeager, uh, he's all set to uh, vacate the premises here. Shamrock Murphy, all in green in anticipation of uh, Irish night coming up on Wednesday. For all the Hockey Night in Boston crew making this season possible, Darby Yeager bidding you have a great year. The same spirit.